What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Total Warhammer. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and continue our campaign of tyranny, murder, death, and wagon across the Dwarvish lands. So we do have some tasks that we need to handle before we finish this off. There are a lot of territories left over that we need to take over. That's pretty much all that there is to talk about right there. The balance here is that we can't afford to take on the dwarves in a long... So basically we need to have some kind of advantage when we take on the dwarves. Every single time, we talked about this in the previous episode, where every time we go up against the dwarves, they are as powerful as we are. And so, even though we can win on the battle map tactically, decisive victories and heroic defenses can only take you so far before they break through because their financial situation is just like ours. It's so solid that they can just keep spawning armies and keep fighting. And so that means we need to master the art of the bum rush. So what we're going to do is we're going to build up some armies. Step one. Step two, we're going to pile them up next to the place that we're going to attack. We're actually going to siege it. Then we're going to have this wog and this character right here. Or maybe we'll have this wog and this character attack the city. I don't know. We'll have this wog and this character basically run point defense down here for whatever they send after us. In the hopes that we can hold off their first big attack and force them to go back and regroup while we conquer all three of these right here and we get rid of this big blue mass in the middle of our territory. I would also be receptive to getting rid of Kara's Akarak in the next exchange of artillery fire as well. After that point, we would focus on hunting down their armies, breaking their willpower, and then from there we would sue for peace until we can regroup, get strong again, and go after them for a final time. Hopefully this time, taking out a pretty big chunk of their holdings down here. I'll probably start over on this side because they have a lot of trouble reinforcing and fighting for these over here. As do I, but that makes them prime for ambush as well because if you hit them and you don't have anybody nearby, it's kind of hard to get to these. And so, in general, they don't suffer a whole lot of attacks. But the next goal is going to be Karak Eight Peaks, Black Iron Mines, and Karak Azul so that we can grab those three. My big worry right now is that by the time we get the dwarves tamed and wiped out, we're going to begin to have issues with the Humies. The Humies are consolidating a lot of territory right now. The Empire fully expands from, like, there to there. Like, the Empire is doing it right now. They're getting it. I don't know if they've taken over Kislev yet. It doesn't look like they have. But in general... I'm hoping that they're having all kinds of trouble with the Warriors of Chaos. That's what I'm hoping for the most. Down here in the south, we shouldn't have to put up with any Chaos incursions or anything like that for a very long time. When you play the Vampire Counts, even then you only get attacked sometimes by Chaos. It's only when they have the really, really, really big thrusts into your territory. And Chaos Warriors do like to thrust, especially if they're in the employ of Slanesh. However, for right now, we're kind of just sitting still. This episode is going to be peaceful, to say the least. Now, if it comes down to it, if it comes down to it, what I will end up doing is I have to preserve this wog. If I can't maintain this wog, we're not getting anything done. And so, we need to have this wog ready to go over here by Karak Eight Peaks. So, I'll probably park him and the wog right here. Or maybe even put them into their territory a little bit for the Raiden camp. Just to keep that even because this whole plan falls apart if I don't have access to my wog. Bitterstone will probably fall. They will probably come in and snipe this. There's probably not a whole lot of point in putting a bunch of money into it right now. So I probably won't. Barakvar, on the other hand, has access for the first time. Oh, we can go with ditches. What do ditches do? Oh, it actually gives the city walls. Okay. Damn, I kind of want that. Although we're going to unlock another slot, so it's not that bad. I'd rather start with the ogres, though. We don't have the money for the ogres, but... I'm sorry, the trolls. I, I definitely want the giant. The giant I want very, very badly. I love ogrens and all that kind of stuff in 40k, and so this seems pretty cool to me. Pretty cool. So he's doing his thing over there. He's regenerating and just hanging out in town right now. That is also fine by me. In the Varenka Hills, we have access to something else, too. Since that is a border area... Yeah, 
It might not be a bad idea. We can either give him a territory marker or we can give him a garrison. The garrison does make us a little bit more resilient versus invasions. But... After we leapfrog this, Kareza Karak is going to be our... Well... I forgot we had all this territory up here like Grom's Peak and all that shit. I completely forgotten about it. We confederated these orcs up here. And I had forgotten about the fact that we had confederated them. Okay. Well, that's something to be dealt with. Let's save our cash for right now. I've been building a lot of stuff. And at the moment, I kind of need to make some money so that I can have trolls. Oh, Blood River Valley has a commandment. That's this one up here, right? Yes. I would say... That sounds good. We'll extort a little bit. I think public order up here should be perfectly fine. Yeah, public order is good, so we'll go ahead and get some more income out of them. I know we're not earning that much, so we got 738. We've got nothing from there because we just took it back. We've got 689, so total... We'll probably get like an extra 50 to 60 coin out of there. It's not too bad. We get 5 per 100 and there's 1300, so yeah, it's not too terrible. Okay, units have been recruited over on this side, so we're no. Yeah, I mean he's at a he's at a solid clip right now. He's an army that you should probably worry about, an army that will probably bust heads if it needs to. I would also say just to go with a ton of archers too, like fill in the rest with cheap archer units. I don't know if I should go with night goblins. They have bad leadership, which is the big part that I kind of don't like about them. They retreat very very easily, but. Oh, Night Goblin Fanatics, how are those better? Their leadership is even worse. Their missile damage is worse. They have a special ranged weapon. What the hell is their ranged weapon? Let's see, they are well suited, spiteful creatures, cabin ways. Deadly raids, yes, that's fine. It's just they have spinning loons. They move hidden in any terrain. And they have spinning loons. I don't know what that means. They seem to be all around weaker, though, by comparison to some of my other stuff, so I don't know. Give me some more archers. Give me more archers. I don't mind the archers. The archers are fantastic. And actually, we don't really have much else to do here. I need to march this army off this way towards Karak Eight Peaks. I'm going to have him stop off briefly right here to bolster his ranks and make himself a little bit more filled out. Like, I want him to have 20 out of 20. But other than that, I'll probably give him a Rock Lobber, and he's got enough archers. I'll probably give him some Black Orcs, too, just so he's got, like, some nice shock troops to go after the enemy with. That sounds nice. So for now, I think the I think we've got everything in order that we need to have in order. These guys will be recruited pretty shortly. That means that we can peek him into this zone on the next turn. He'll recruit a couple of black orcs, then we'll take him down to Karak Eight Peaks, and we'll get ready for the declaration on the dwarves, because fightiness may not hold out that long, and I need the assistance. If I don't have the assistance of this wog right here, then unfortunately that's just the way she goes, Rick. Okay, so the Empire has taken Marienburg. That's funsies. Yeah, the Empire is consolidating, so I'm thinking it's going to be one slog after another here. The first big slog is getting rid of the dwarves. Once we got rid of them, I think the next big slog is going to be getting rid of mankind. Because they are definitely in a position right now that I do not have an appreciation for. We need black orcs. 
how do they compare to these guys? Their armor is way better. Leadership is way better. Their melee attack, surprisingly enough, is not quite as good. Melee defense is not as good either. So I just may recruit some more biggins, and we'll just keep them for right now. Everything else looks pretty good. Now that he's fully recruited up, I want to bring him down... Yeah, let's bring him down this way. He's going to replenish for another turn or two. But after replenishing, we'll probably plant him somewhere over here to get ready to fight with anybody that comes down this way. These guys over here, Grimgore, unfortunately, is pretty heavily depleted at the moment. And I can't really afford to do much else with his army, which is really a disappointment because I would like to have a third fully fleshed out army. Once we go to war, I think it's going to be necessary. We'll probably do some raiding and stuff like that if we absolutely have to in order to get the cash solidified. How is our chaos corruption doing over here? Is it still, like, on its way down? Chaos corruption. Yeah, it's still it's going down to 13%. Okay. Not exactly what I was going for, but it'll have to do for right now. Meanwhile, up in this area, we can finally make our first troll cave. So that's pretty fun. We're going to have monstrous units. And so maybe that's what I... We've got a monstrous unit. That's why everybody's mad at the orcs. They got monstrous units. We've got the next turn coming up here. The war is coming very, very shortly. So if you're worried this has been boring so far, don't panic yourself. It's going to kick off. Believe me, it's going to kick off sooner rather than later. Alright, so on our turn, he's still recruiting for one more turn, but we should be able to get hustling once he's finished. The Black Orcs and the Biggins are essentially one of the few units that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most Dwarvish units as well. The thing you got to be careful about is because we are fighting with the Dwarves, they have these guys called Troll Slayers. Well, they're called Slayers, but it's short for Troll Slayers. So anyways, they have Slayers, and Slayers are monster hunters. They're like professional monster hunters. Basically, in Dwarvish society, if you offend your family or you offend their culture, the only way you can make amends for it is by shaving your hair into a mohawk, covering yourself with tattoos, and going and fighting the biggest, baddest monsters you can find, completely and totally armorless. They, they basically run into battle almost nude. And if you die in battle that way, you are redeemed, and you can like rejoin your ancestors and stuff like that. Slayers get massive bonuses fighting like big creatures, and so it's kind of a pain in the ass dealing with them, but that's not a problem for today, I don't think. I'm going to send him down south, and we'll see what we can line up down here. Ekron or Dragonhorn would be nice. Dragonhorn actually earns more than Ekron, so I'd probably take that first. Actually, I'll probably send him up to Stone Mine and just have him raid in there for right now, and if the... Dwarves want to get mad about it. They can come at me, bro. Okay. Raiding by Skunk Gore Spitter of the Greenskin Wog is affecting local obedience. Oh, that's right. If you sit still for too long, he raids. I forgot about that shit. Alright, well, there's going to be diplomatic problems if I do this, but we're done recruiting, so let's get in here. We. Oh, really? They've got allies now. Ooh, they've solidified their position. So we may need to fix that. Not really worried about Karak Karajrin. The Empire, though, is an issue. They would have to travel through a pretty big chunk of territory over here to get after us. What's the Empire doing right now? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go to my diplomatic menu and let me get this sorted out. So the Border Princes. They have treaties with no one. The time for talk is over. Make your demands. They rejected my demand for a non-aggression pact. Vampire counts. Would you like a non-aggression pact? They have rejected it as well. This might be our last hurrah then if we go after... 
We have some pretty serious issues. I didn't realize they were allied with humanity, so the two biggest empires on the planet are allied. That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing at all. Now, granted, I don't think they'll come down here to mess with me, but we're outgunned on such a different level right now that I don't trust it. Like, we are really, really outgunned. Still, I suppose you don't know till you try, so... Nah, screw it. Whatever, if we go down, we go down. War is declared! Let's go ahead and take Karak Eight Peaks. Are we actually sieging that, or are we not sieging it? Why are you not sieging? Oh, because you see that tiny little... He's missing a little bit of range. That sucks, because I really wanted to siege that, like, this turn. Well, you're going to be the Northern Guard, buddy. I hate to tell you, but, uh... Welcome, welcome to a world of shit. Welcome to your life sucking, until further notice. Let's have him cross the border real fast. And he needs to recruit inside local. Let's get him... A couple squads of biggins. He's already got archers. He needs some more boar riders. Some siege weaponry would be nice so that they can't turtle. So we'll get on that next. And that'll just have to be it for right now. We are going to be a little bit low on cash as time goes along, but we should be conquering enough territory here to where I think it'll even out. They shouldn't invade us for a couple of turns. I'm going to need somebody to guard these guys on this side and protect, I think. I just I don't want my siege being hit from behind. I would prefer for that not to happen. One of your most trusted bosses has come back from a raid empty-handed, so he says, but he's wearing a right nifty helmet and it's all shiny. Where'd he get all that dosh to polish that helmet? So we'll lose leadership, or we'll gain leadership and lose fightiness. I can't lose fightiness right now, so that means we have to demand teeth. So there it is, we demanded teeth. Not that we really had much of a choice. I'm gonna leave his army like that, basically, once he gets done, because... We ain't really got much of a choice, in all honesty. Why are you... Oh, he's mustering. It wouldn't click him, though. I had a bug right there. There. I need two of those, and then his army will be done. On this side, Karak 8 Peaks. We're actually in a pretty strong position just to whack this bitch and take it. That's not a very good garrison. Screw it. Oh, there it is. Victory is ours. We could sack the place and take a whole bunch of cash, but actually we need this for our territory. So unfortunately, I don't really have much of a choice. The terrifying mask of E. Never look upon the terrifying mask of E. You don't know what you might see. It causes terror. So that's pretty cool. You can take that, and I think you can assign it to a unit, and it makes them provide all kinds. Maybe I should have waited for him to get closer. Did he take part in that fight? Oh, we just like soloed that place. Okay, so that's cool. I accept that. Alright, Karak Eight Peaks, what do you have going on? Well. So further notice, we could use the income for sure. Definitely could use the income. So for right now... Let's put in a boss's tent, just to even out that leadership problem that we have. It'll make our lives easier. Now, this should only go down for one more turn, and then it should be good after that. Like, we should only have to wait this out for a couple of turns before it gets better. The wog should be maintained now. Yeah, our fightiness is back up. I'd like to sweep all this territory, and then, if we're especially spry about it, then we'll swing around this way using the undermines. We'll come back out, and we should be good. I'm going to start sending one of my agents around to see if maybe we can figure out some kind of course of action to mess with the enemy. We do have some problems down in this area. It looks like they're stirring up malcontents in this area.
Mm, filthy stunnies and their malcontent. You know how that goes. Ekrand is probably rateable. But I think I'm going to go after Stone Mine first. So let's take... Nope, that is not what I wanted. Sorry. Let's go with that. We're going to march our punk ass out here. He's raising an army right now, which means we need to be on him, like, next turn. He shouldn't be able to raise anything too fantastic in one turn, but who knows? The dwarves could come after us, and then life as we know it will be sad. We actually have... Oh, we have a commandment over here now. Cool. Well, let's go with growth and obedience, then. That sounds the best. I would like to have growth and obedience. Valaya Sorrow, because of conquest, has that minus 10. We've got an excess population that we can deploy... I would say that putting it into Karak Eight Peaks is probably the smartest idea. And now we wait to see what happens. So they're going to move agents around a little bit. My suggestion, or at least my suspicion, is that it's going to take them a little bit to move troops around in order to come after us and fight. We should be alright for a couple of turns anyways before the unholy murder god of the dwarves decides to bring them north with their angry shin biting and headbutting of pelvises of pelvi i don't know the populace of one of your settlements is granny okay so they got negative growth over there that should be good now on this side oh look they grow weed here how much am i getting from my army being here five so it should be good without me let's go ahead and put him in underway mode Bring him over to here, and we're going to hit Karak Azul next. Chances are we probably don't even need that over here, but I'm going to keep it building just in case. I am also going to lean towards making this area a recruitment zone. I don't think anybody's going to attack it, so Crooked Fang... We've already got that over there. Crooked Fang Fort is where? It's one of these ones down here. Okay, we can't really deploy anything else down there, so give it a little bit of obedience. We'll spend big money this turn, and then we're going to raid these two. I'll try to keep them propped up. The conquest penalty that we're taking is going to be a little bit shitty, but life should be okay as long as we persevere here. He's got an army ready to go as well. I need you up in Varenka Hills. Just in case the enemy decides that they want to come after us from the north. It's always a possibility that a bunch of angry pink monkey men will come storming through that northern pass right there and coming after us. And that's not something I feel like dealing with right now. In addition, we're also going to attack him. I say I don't think he can actually run away right now. And we will take Stone Mine. We haven't fought a battle in a while, so we're going to fight this one. I will see you all in the next episode, though. We're out of time for right now. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Total Warhammer. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everybody.